All right, uh, it's Tuesday, May 30th, and this is our first uh, sort of daily scrum for um, our one closing, <laughs> the closing couple of weeks here. Um, uh, do we have Bala? I see Bala, I think you did some work on the, let me um, Yeah, yeah, John, yeah. I'll, I'll share it if you wanna, or if you wanna share it either way. Yeah, um, please, please go ahead and share the, to the John, probably. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, which uh, it's this consolidated sprint? Is that the, or do we have a board like thing? Um, yeah, I mean, we could do consolidated sprint or we could do uh, automation, but we also want release in here too, right? Or we could just do them both separately. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah, so just to fill you in, I, I, I kind of had some time uh, over the weekend and spent a lot of it on this stuff. Um, yeah, and, I, mean, I missed a lot of messages. I was away for three and a half days and I, I saw <laughs> come back in. Yeah, well, it was like, I, you know, I, I just had a lot of free time. My wife was still out of town. I'm like, you know what? I need to just sit down and get some stuff done. So. Yeah. I, uh, and then I got, Thanks. Thanks, uh, got into that mode of like, I must make this work. So yeah. I, uh, yeah, I went through the end to end provisioning and just a bunch of little tiny things, right? And iterated, 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 and then also put together an approval controller. So it's actually pretty cool now. It's not all checked in, but you can apply a single um, package variant set and it'll provision. Um, all the, you know, it'll, it'll spin up new clusters, bootstrap them, create repositories for them, join those repositories to Nephew. So that's all basically working. I added an auto approval controller so that you can put a, an annotation on the, the package revisions and, and, and have them automatically get approved instead of having to click propose, approve, propose, approve for all these different packages that get created. There's still some problems. The clusters aren't coming up fully. Um, maybe it's a CNI issue. I think Wim suggested that might be it. So we'll, we'll have to dig into that. But um, I, in the course of this, I raised a bunch of issues. Um, um, so let me actually see your hand, Vish, um, one second. Uh, so this is the, the PR that I've been working on in this regard. And basically, I got it down to where you run this one command, uh, gcloud command, and it provisions the whole environment. And then there's a bunch of issues that I've raised that need some resolution. So I think that, that's kind of the state of things as they are right now. Uh, Vish, you, you have your hand up, though. What, oh, yeah. I was going to ask you, is this part of the PR that you showed? So you preempted me by oh, sorry. sharing that. I wanted to make sure that you're talking about this PR. Okay. Yes, I'm talking about this PR and what I tried to do is as I ran into issues, I either raised them, some of them I worked around like this, you know, I just manually built an image and pushed it to our repo, which works for now, but that, that you know, and it looks like somebody already, Rado, maybe already fixed this one, right? So like some of them have already been handled, which is amazing. Um, so I think... Um, is every single one of this a, a R1 issue? Uh, the, the, um, just a leading question, that's all to ask. Like, oh yeah, looking at all this, I think we are in a good state. We don't have to fix all these issues or is there like one or two of them, but is a must fix. You that's know a good sure. question. Um, just because of the timing. <laughs> that's why I'm yeah, asking yeah. the question. So this one is a must fix, right? We need to get that fixed. Let's, let's maybe go through them. This one's not a must fix. We could just live with manually built images for now. This one's already been fixed. This is not a must fix. It's it's a debug. It makes debugging harder because failures get swallowed. Um, this is already merged. Yeah, anything with the kpt.py, probably we can directly use the kpt command directly if it doesn't yeah, work. Yeah, that's kind of what I did is I just hacked around it, but yeah. Um, this has been fixed. Uh, this is This needs to be fixed and is partially fixed, I think. Um, this needs to be fixed, but it's just emerging of something. This is already fixed. 
uh, again, this just needs to merge. This is uh, another thing that needs to merge. Um, I'd, I'd like to fix this. I didn't raise an issue for this one. This is just the way we did. This is like part of the process, right? Is discovering the friction and the, the challenges with the primitives that we built and the missing primitives. Like a lot of the kept functions that are out there in the world are kind of sucky, honestly. And so we, we need to improve them. We need to potentially build new ones that meet our needs better. Do those have to happen for R1? Probably not. I would love to see them in an R1 follow-up. Um, so, um, but, but like, so I guess before we, you know, I've already dug into a bunch of this, um, like some of these, like this, I think doesn't need to be done in R1. That's kind of a bigger, bigger change. Um, so we're super close actually to having, um, to having it where we can spin up and do the whole end to end story, um, but we're not quite there. So even, so, so I guess the question is for the group is like, how do we wanna proceed here? Um, should we um, go through the board? Uh, Bala, so you took the issues, can you explain to me, did you took the issues that have been created and, and, and put them on the board or what, what's the sort of status of the board uh, going forward here? So, so board, if you go to the consolidated sprint, I mean, that's, 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 we could do that if you want to, uh, because if you okay. go to the, if you, you can chain the view from table to the, uh, if you, if you click on the drop down for the consolidated um, sprint, uh, okay. one, one hour in, in the consolidated sprint, sprint. Oh, this one. Yes. Thank yeah. you. If you change yeah. that to okay. board. Okay. Yes, we'll, we'll get that view. So we could use that because all Sprint 5 items, irrespective of which sub-project or which group it is in, we, we can find it here. Okay. I also created the issues for the end-to-end -end test. I created an epic for end-to-end -end tests and then added a okay. bunch of issues there. Uh, like okay. uh, whatever we discussed in, in, in the deck that you created. Uh, not okay. this one, actually, there is one more, I think. Uh, not the, for the, I, I think that if we, I think that maybe in the end, if we scroll down all the way to the bottom, maybe. Because, uh, yeah, things like that. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. so these are the things that from the discussion at the TSC. Yes, yes. Uh, okay. So essentially from the deck, yeah. So okay. we have all those things here. We could uh, we could use single, the single board, but if it's overwhelming, if you want to go to the individual board, that's also there as well. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think I'm okay, okay with it. What I'd like to figure out, and we don't need to do it in the Scrum here, I guess we talked about... Like I want to make sure one is I guess uh, folks have things they 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 can jump in on and contribute if they if they have the, the the capacity you know that there's a clear picture of where we're going and what we're what we're delivering um, I think that um, we have all the pieces like we talked about in the TSC it's more gluing them all together which is what um, we had some EDE scripts that had started to do that, and that's what I, you know, what, what I iterated on over the last few days, and they moved pretty close. Um, we're at the point where I guess if we go to that, um, uh, like basically number thirty two thirty five two thirty six, two thirty six is mostly there, but there's still some details um, and then and then we'll get to, yeah to 230 uh, okay yeah 237 238 okay this is actually good yeah we could just go through it in this way so um, maybe we can start with for each of these a user guide. Like okay, if I'm a user, here's how I'm here's how I'm gonna do number two thirty five. I'm going to, you know, I, there's two different scenarios. One is the sandbox scenario, and two is the bring your own cluster scenario. The sandbox scenario 
I want to get, it's basically this command right here um, with this pointing to the, this is pointing to my branch, but we could point this to the, I, I put it in the readme, but basically it's, this spins up a machine, gives it, points it at a boot script or a startup cloud init script that will take that machine, provision the underlying OS. There's actually like a kernel uh, module that has to be built. So it, it does that, it, it, you know, I didn't write all that, that stuff that uh, Victor and, and Vish and other folks have written, um, but it provisions all that and then starts installing all those packages through the Ansible scripts that we have. And then um, it, you know, basically comes up at the end. Uh, the idea would be it would stop at the, at the end of this. So that you would have a fully engaged Nephew. You could go to the UI, you could go to the CLI. And then to do 236, I have a question um, on 235. So yes. you mentioned two things. One is bring your own cluster. And uh, I also think that bring your own VM also should be an option because not everybody will probably have access to G Cloud. Yes, that is a great point. Um, and I think the scripts, so I, I focused on the GCE. There was a script called GCE run and I split it into GCE init and GCE install sandbox. And GCE init basically just does some stuff and then call, you know, pulls in the, pulls in the, installs Git, pulls in the repo, yeah. um, and then uh, and then goes in and runs it from the repo, the GCE install sandbox. So, correct. Initially, yeah. that was actually done by Rado so that we could use it for our end-to-end -end tests, basically, which will be running on the GCP cloud. So right. I know that is how it naturally progressed to that point. Uh, maybe so, there are, as part of the documentation, we should probably have scripts if people bring their own VM and don't have a GCP account, they should not get charged for it. They should right. probably be able to. And I, and I think Victor's, I think those scripts, I know that Victor said that like it can do Vagrant, right? It can do other. Vagrant and Ubuntu, yes, at this time. So that should become another task okay. probably. Makes um, sense. Build out the same the same flow for getting a sandbox up and running, in bring your own VM environment, uh, or, or even I don't know if somebody wants to do Amazon or whatever, like or open like uh, or, or OpenStack on Red Hat or, or something, right? Like whatever we think, and people have the skills, like like some of it's like what can we do because people already know how to do it in that environment, um, and, and part of it's what do we think our users would want to consume, so we we should probably create issues for a couple different environments and then refactor as much as we can. So that the, 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 like, I think 90% of it is already, there's nothing GC. Once you, once you do this GCE init, I think that what's called currently called GCE run could be install sandbox. GCE could just be install sandbox. Cause I think all it does is Ansible scripts basically. I don't think it does anything GCE specific in there. So that could be a good separation, just to have different init's that pull it in and, and run the stand, sandbox. And then for you bring your own, you could just manually get clone, run the installed sandbox. Um, so that's so maybe we should start there is create some issues for that and have um, some folks work on that and get this get get 235 completely done so that we have. Uh, a full management environment. Um, and by the way, the management environment setup uses Nephew. So what it does is uh, it takes the, in order to set up like the management repository and our management staging repository, it uses our repository controllers. So it's pretty cool actually. You, you, kept, you kept live apply, you know, our repository package, and then it, you know, it's so it's using it's it's using our own controllers to to set us up. So it's, it's pretty it's pretty nice. Um, so do we have? Um, sorry, let me switch back. Oh, there's hands up. Sorry, I, I didn't have the right screens up. Uh, I don't know who's first. So 
I think I was first. Yeah, Aang was first. Um, can we decide on two or three VM environment as the baseline? Because what you describe, if I heard correctly, is you know Vagrant and potentially OpenStack. I, I'm or asking. Is it dependent on people who, wanting to contribute? Yeah, exactly. Depends on who who, who we have to contribute. I, I don't have an I don't have a good reason, and maybe other people here do because they know our our end users better. I don't have a good reason to pick one thing over the other. I I we have GCE because Google's, you know, because we're, we've got a Google environment yeah. and we're providing funding to, to to for some of that. So beyond that, whatever the community, whatever the folks here think is the right choice, we should pick one or two more. I think we should pick at least one that's that's. Uh, not even cloud that you could run on your laptop, and we should pick potentially one other cloud. And that's the second part of my question: is uh, can one of those environment be a dev environment, so to speak? You know, running on my laptop kind of thing. Yeah, definitely. Because anybody who looking to adopt Nephew will need to try it out on their laptop kind of thing. Yeah, and 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 to Wim's coming in the. I think it is layered right now. Right now, it's it's just like I said. There's two sections. There's a there's a knit. Just even that's not particularly dependent on GCE or anything. That just pulls out um, the Git repos, and then there's a you know, we we have it. It's using Ubuntu right now. It is dependent on it being Ubuntu. But if we want to change that, that's fine. But um, so. Can we maybe get some volunteers to uh, jump in and, and, yeah. and do that? I, I can help with my dev environment, which is Ubuntu VM running on mm -hmm. VMware Fusion on Mac. If that's where That's it's great. I think that's going to be a little harder than other environments because of the architectural differences. But the, no, no, I mean, this is on Intel 64 instead of ARM oh. 64. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I have sure. to. Uh, yeah, Liam. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We, 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 we're, we're, we're going to, uh, we're, we're, we we'll uh, like to take the, we uh, to help out with the VM task. Uh, so that's that's the what we're going to try and work on. Uh, so that that's okay if we can help with that. So. Uh, what are you thinking, Liam? This call, yeah, and, and Anne can. Yeah. Um, yeah, we have a. Well, what we're working on now is uh, we have a we have a VM uh, a bunch of VMs running in a uh, running in a uh, OpenStack um, environment. I'm oh. not uh, so we're we're we we have we have we we have more or less the management cluster up. Uh, we have a bit of a uh, but we're we're just trying to track the things. So we 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 okay. we, we can take we can we can help with that. Uh, just on the Mac, I, I our actual open stack environment went down last week, so I was trying it out on my MacBook. I have an ARM. It's the it, the 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 gotcha there is the uh see this the what do you call it? this the 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 the, 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 the container lab doesn't work in in uh, ARM and it's not going to I think that's going to be a real showstopper for anyone trying. Uh, but I did get it working but on. There's uh, nothing. I don't... Liam, it has nothing to do with container lab. It's to do with the the network images don't support ARM, so it's basically yeah, exactly yeah. The images uh, it's not built yeah. for ARM, so just won't. But no, I because we you, you cannot use it uh, because there's no there's no system that you can plug into, so that's why it's not supported. Yeah, yeah. yeah but I think I, if you I use get a, it, we, we didn't get it up on an a, Intel Mac. It, it works because yeah, it should work on an Intel Mac, all right? Yeah. Yeah, we. I got it working on a on a on an old uh, on, on an old desktop Ubuntu. I had here. We'd also like to try it with. Uh, we won't promise anything yet, John. We'd also like to try it on Azure if we can. We we'll see if we can get some resources. Azure resources. So, so, Liam, are you saying you'll work on an OpenStack, or you'll work on the uh, Ubuntu? What, we, It'd be an know? Ubuntu VM, but our, 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 there are Ubuntu VMs that they're running in OpenStack, but that shouldn't make any difference. I wouldn't think. It shouldn't make any difference. It's just like we want to make sure that we have an init script. Like I'd love to be able to yeah. do to do it like with a single command because that that way people just they don't have to do anything, right? You just if you've got an OpenStack environment, run this command. If you've got a GCE environment, run this command. If you've yeah. got a Mac Fusion environment, 
I don't know, you might have to click and point or you might be able to run a command. I don't know, I haven't used it for a long time. But um, I just, I'm gonna put, uh, how about this? I'll put for other environments. Uh, uh, we'll say M two. So, what I would just ask is that the two of you discuss yes. it, create issues, and we start tracking it. Yep. Awesome. Okay. Um, Sounds good. And I notice you have problem typing Azure. Is that? <laughs> did, did I have trouble with that? I don't know. If that's, um... <laughs> um, okay. So so that's uh, two thirty five. Um, I would ask that that for this one, I think we're pretty close to being able. We we might want to merge it and and then. Tweak it. Um, there's a few different PRs that have to merge, um, but I think that it's in a decent place, you know, as a checkpoint. Um, so uh, especially if we merge some of the other things, there's there's areas where it's like I'm, since I'm pulling from my book, I have to like do a few weird things, or I've pushed some images manually that we'll probably have to do a round of edits on it after that. But yeah, Vish. Yeah. Can you share what the acceptance criteria should look like for this PR? I know you have shared the command and I've run that command as of this morning and I'm trying to see what else should I look for because the pods are up and running, but I'm like trying to figure out what needs to be done. So what I, what I'm doing, like ultimately where I want to get, so this is a good question. I think that probably for this PR, this first acceptance criteria should be, um, number 235 it is the, the 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 management cluster is up and running so i can go to the ui i can see that a management repository is there and registered i can see uh we also need a management staging one for our bootstrapping process so, so those two are there i can see the the nephew example packages repository is registered the free okay. 5gc uh, repository is registered and that I can sort of poke around and see all those things. Probably we should just start there. And th where I was trying to get and didn't quite get to was several, a couple steps past that. Mm -hmm. For one, um, where's that long thing on the issues? So I'm, what I really, where I wanna get, say in the next couple of days, um, would be where I can apply this package variant set, I'd like to get to this place maybe today or tomorrow. I can apply this package variant set and I can come back five minutes later and I have those edge clusters up and running, fully registered and working. Um, that gets most of the way there. Right now, where it gets stuck is that it looks like the, while the worker nodes are, uh, for the kind clusters are there, um, they're not joined to the cluster somehow. And it may well be that like the CNI, I didn't even dig into that at all. So um, okay. what that means is that they don't finish bootstrapping. So while the, the their, their repositories are there, they're registered, the tokens and secrets are all there. And the bootstrap controller is trying to install Config sync on the edge cluster. It's not, it, it gets it installed, but config sync's not able to start because the only node in the cluster is the control plane node and it's tainted. And so uh, it doesn't have anywhere to run. That's the state it's in right now. Um, but um, I don't think that we need to. So, so John, to fix yeah. so just, uh, so I, I got to that state. So the, I, what I can do is create a package with the cluster net. So the CNI it will fix it, but uh, I didn't do it. But so okay. I can to get there. If you install that package also as on, on the staging uh, package or the staging repo, okay, and you will install the CNI and then you will be 
good. So I'll, I'll push a PR for that. Yeah, yeah, if you can push a PR for the that package, then I can yeah. try that. And then and then I think we'll be ready to kind of like, we probably there's probably like three or four PRs we have to submit and merge. And then we have to point the this script at those those merged tagged PRs rather than at like some branch that I'm pointing them at right now. And then yeah. we can we can submit this and then we'll be up through 235 basically in actually up through 236 uh in in here. Yeah. Uh, how do I say your name? Fiacra? Is that right? Yep, that's close enough. Yep. <laughs> Hey John, yeah, I, yeah, I'm jumping back to 235 again. I'm just wondering, is there any previous learnings or knowledge around different environments, um, and has that been kind of collected? I, maybe there's not enough big, big enough audience here, but has everybody you have been targeting GCP or, or Google Cloud or you know in previous or their own kind of playing around with this, or is there any other learnings with OpenStack with you or? Anne has been using, I think a lot of people have been using like their MacBooks. They're local, yeah, yeah. Okay. Local. And then I don't know, I mean, Vish, have you tried it in any other environment? Hmm. Or Victor's, I think Victor's on vacation. He, 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 I think, did it in Vagrant at least. But okay. Yeah. I've been using Fedora basically in the last okay. time. So I might even still be trying to look for there and trying to use Podman and stuff when it comes to kind. Yeah. Uh, so everybody's using kind essentially as a, as a cluster. Yeah. And then, I think even Anne and I both we played around with Cube Admin to bring up a cluster, but we know I am not made much progress on that. But okay. yeah. I, I see some I'm running yeah. Cube Admin. I am not using Kai. I create two nodes, two VM, each a node, mm -hmm. a control plane and a worker node. And then that's what I've been doing to deploy SMF, UPF, and um okay. Yeah, I, I see I see some stuff around micro kates as well. That's this maybe some leftovers from other stuff or I don't know are people yeah. using yeah so the micro is there uh, initially yeah. it was used to just uh, as part of the end to end testing uh, okay. rado wanted to try out uh, bringing it up basically yeah uh, no if you but... use kind for example the cni the macfeelin plugin uh, you have to mount it and share it Okay. Before, yeah, before my mother. Yeah, in terms of yeah, so, like there's, there's there's lots of flavors of different kind of Kubernetes management. Yeah, so if you uh, use let's, one. let's differentiate here. Okay, so so there's there's three now different kind of stories yeah. here, right? So <laughs> one is um, the sandbox mm -hmm. on GCE. The other is the sandbox on a VM or other non-GCE provider. And then the third is bring your own cluster. So bring your own cluster for the management cluster. Now that uh, I've done that, most of my work has been done with just an autopilot, GKA autopilot cluster, which is super easy for me and doesn't cost me anything. But for everybody else, it's maybe not so cheap. But the, the so, so there's some experience there. We actually haven't talked about this this script doesn't do that this script is about setting up the sandbox environment so there is a task here that we need another issue for to do some refactoring once this merges that will differentiate between the install of the management and the install of the sandbox so what is the what is the difference the management cluster one it it, it doesn't uh, bootstrap the cluster. It assumes the cluster is already there. Two, it um, it only includes the base, you know, Nafio packages, um, whereas the sandbox includes uh, cluster API, like a bunch of other things that are that would be design choices as a distributor of Nephew that I would make. So I, I would say, okay, I want a uh, cluster API in there. I want Git. I want um, kind. Uh, and, and so, um, you know, those are all part of the sandbox. I, we also add like the, the stock repositories of 
you know, this free 5GC packages and there's uh, an FEO example packages. Those are those are part of the sandbox. So I, I do want to differentiate between those those things so that when people go to the bring your own, I'm not probably factor that in a way that people can kind of choose. So so ultimately, and, and, and to me, it's not as critical for R1, but ultimately people should be able to say, I don't want to run cluster API. I don't want to run Gitty. I just want to run, uh, you know, I want to connect to GitHub instead, and I want to connect to uh, Crossplane for my actuator, right? Like, so that's, I want to make sure we're, our packaging and our installations are factored in such a way that people can make those choices. So everything we've been talking about so far is really more on the sandbox. And there's actually a follow-up task to this once sort of all these pieces merge to do some refactoring. Because like we said, this started with the scripts that were around provisioning the sandbox environment for EDE tests. But it should all be this. We don't need multiple ways to do this. Let's try to refactor it. So yeah, that no, that, that that was kind of where I was going with it. And I know yeah. um, Post there that, that, that there is a, a kind of a pre-installed image that people can use. But is there a risk in terms of if we open up to, we support every single possible uh, cloud provider, base platform, blah, blah, blah. You, you end up with a huge amount of variation in terms of how you, or, or you know, documentation to, to to support and maintain also um but yeah yeah no, in our one we don't have that kind of capacity i think for yeah. like if you go if you look at the deck we presented last week like there's a there's a slide that was not presented live but is in the deck that's you know limitations well we only tested with gitty and you know this environment and, and kind clusters and cluster api and that's because that's our sandbox and that's all we can do in this time frame but um, I think in a follow-on, we can start to kind of expand that. Like, anyway, so. No, that's cool, yeah, I'll, I'll have a look at this. So if post, does, does what, do, I didn't realize the one summit workshop was on Azure and AWS, so we can have a look at that as well, yeah, maybe. And yeah, but the code's different. I mean, it's different, it's all different now, right? So so the big pieces that, that the, re the big constraints we have right now are around not so much the basic functionality of Nephew, it's around the automation pieces that we're utilizing. So we're utilizing cluster API. So we built packages for cluster API to provision kind clusters. In order for, um, for us to provision uh, clusters, you know, we need to be able to provision networks that can talk between the clusters. So if we were doing this, say, and provisioning uh, GKE G, or clusters in GCP because GKE doesn't even support Malta. So G, G, open source G, Kubernetes clusters in GCP, like we could do that with cluster API, but we would need to make sure that we carefully set up how those secondary networks are created so that they're in a shared VPC, right? And that sort of external out of band configuration that would have to happen. And that's a lot of documentation and we could do that, but it's not fully automated. To do the fully automated stack right now, we're scoping it down to this very simple kind clusters in a single VM. Agreed. Yeah, agreed, agreed. Yeah. Cool, thanks. Okay, so uh, we're already over over our first 30 minutes. We're <laughs> just supposed to be. Um, uh, so I think 235 and 236, we're, like I said, we're really close on. Um, and once those are working, I think, I. I I don't see big issues with 237. Like I think that already pretty well works. Um, or at least I, I guess I should ask, uh, do we have like do we have packages for it? Is it is it packaged yet? What are the what's the state of that? Uh, Tal, I guess would be the one to ask. Uh, sorry, yeah, I was muted. Um, we're good. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're not totally done, but we have uh, the three uh, controllers running and uh, Dennis has already started te testing, trying to create uh, a call. <laughs> uh, we have a, a lingering issue with, uh, um, with updating configs for day two changes, but I think uh, in terms of integration, I think we're ready to put everything together. So what we need in order to do 237 right here is 
even simpler than that. We just need an image and we need a kept package and we need it that cut package in the Nephew example packages and tagged. And once we have that, we can create a, a PVS that would dis distribute the workload or distribute the operator across all the edge clusters. Do we, so we probably, if we don't have those things, we probably need to make sure we have issues to make sure those things get created. I think we have those things, <laughs> but I don't think we've really, uh, at least I haven't tested, like Wait, I haven't tested. Do that. we have a cap function a package? Function? I don't think we do. I don't think we need a function. I think we just need a package for it. Oh, yeah, okay. I, I, I think but I don't think we have created a cap package, right? So it would have to include all the roles and everything, right? Like there's a bunch of manifests that go along with deploying the workload in Kubernetes that we need to make sure we have all the pieces. I don't think we have. Okay, okay, maybe. Okay, well, let's let, whether there is or not, let's just. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out. Who, come back. Who can, I, who can I? Who can I assign that for? To. Um. I I can't take it on. I have other outside nephew commitment coming up. I know Dennis is kind of working on it right now, but I don't volunteer him. Uh, if he doesn't want to volunteer. Uh, I see he's not in the meeting now. So. Um, let, let me raise it at the 11 p.m. call tonight with Dennis and uh, Stephen, and we'll figure out an answer. So actually, I was looking at the board. It says it says done. Implement the initial free 5GC package for operator. I was looking at- Let me at, find it. I'm pretty sure I saw it. It's I, I was, not I was, necessarily the no, same no. package, Bala. Okay. Okay. Okay, because it's, it's, it's full. Uh, I, I've been using it to deploy free 5GC operator, but I'm not so sure it's the right format. Okay, okay. So well, who should I who should I assign to follow up on this? Put my name now, please. Okay. Yeah, yeah it, it exists. I'm just I'm not sure anybody has actually tested it. So yeah, or it's, recently. Uh, I just put this issue in the chat. Yeah, and, and I link to the package if anybody so wants that, to. So that one is there, but it's from six months ago. That's from the workshop. Exactly, so exactly. Yeah. yeah. Probably yeah. not. Because probably lately needs... what, what we've been doing is make uh, Docker push, make uh, deploy, make right. Docker build, Docker push, and de deploy. So I'm not so yeah. sure that's the right package format. That's just for your local consumption. Yeah. So yeah. all those manifests need to go into a package like that one or update to that package. And then we would create a just like just like on this we have so this this what we would have is ah, where to go so this I, this package yeah. variant set creates clusters then we create another package variant set that lays down that operator across those clusters and then we create another package variant set that lays down the specific upf instances and across the clusters, different clusters, the SMF across, like, in fact, we could patch that all into one package and then you could do it all in one click and yep. come back 10 minutes later and you'd have something running and then you could run a call through it. That's, that's where I really want to be, but. Uh, it doesn't exist as far as I know because Dennis and I have, and Ronak have been using the make file script to do right. build and test. Okay. okay, so yeah, so yeah, just follow up on that. That okay. would get us through. Um, I, I moved it back to to, to do uh, talk, if you didn't mind. Yeah. Can you say that, Bala, again? I, I moved it back to to do. It was in a done column, that particular oh, okay. thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's fine. Um, I, I just want to point out it exists. It needs to be updated. That's it. Yeah, that's thanks. Yeah. Because I think that's, like John said, it's old. It's from November or whatever. Yeah. OK. Cool. It may not reflect the latest stuff that we built so that's the operator what just happened that's the operator then we need a package that represents the actual functions i don't uh we we, we this refers to them but we probably okay so Um, 
the requirement, CRs, etc. and go through. So this is actually a, a um, you might already have some of these. When do you, this, you guys were testing some, your controllers and things. So did you have packages and were those complete or were you, do we need to rework some of them in order to um, fit into the model here? No, we are complete. The only thing that is still pending but I need to resolve it with Steven is the peer config stuff uh, to do the inter SMF uh, UPF part. Okay. But we use those packages, yeah. We use those packages. What, what, what I never tested, John, uh, one of the things, I don't know whether you tested it, whether you inject cluster context inside of the package. So we basically took that package and then we added manually the cluster context. So Okay, no, we, we, we haven't tested that yet. That would be part of, so those packages are going to need to be constructed to accept cluster context. And then the cluster context has to get loaded as part of Correct. when we create the clusters. So that's, a, that's okay. Uh, so someone has to do that. Uh, so, but yeah, so we are depending on that. So what we did is we took those packages in our test framework and then we added manually the cluster context. So, because okay. otherwise none of our functions do anything. Uh, injection. Um, uh, so do we have a volunteer to look at how this, this will come sort of this, so, so this is updating our current cluster package so that it has a concept of the cluster architecture, that context of like what, what its master interface for CNI is and things like that. Um, we didn't. I don't think we modeled beyond the simple model we had in the workshop. So we didn't have to do node pools or anything, which I think is fine for now because they're just kind clusters with one shape node. Um, so we have to update that cluster package and then we have to uh, kind of uh, update the packages for the individual network functions so that they accept uh, a config injection of that context. Um, those are the two things. Um, any volunteers? And, and I'm willing to help out if people want, aren't clear on what needs to be done here. I can work with the integrate cluster context. Okay. If you're, of course, you're willing to help out. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. So then I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna assign this whole thing to you, Fish, <laughs> and we can those might split into separate yeah. issues, but we'll we'll work that out later. Okay, awesome. Uh, there's my Okay, so that was this. Okay, we were going through this. Uh, that's probably where we should start. Like, just like, unless there are other, because we can't do any of these things until kind of these are, I mean, people could start working on UI tests. We don't really have a test plan for UI. We probably, if somebody's interested in, in writing up something that we can do as a test plan. Um, there were a couple of other things. Oh, that reminds me. Do we have Ganesh or Chandra here today? Um, I don't see them. There's a few other UI things that um, right now, so the way the UI works is it's a backstage. Uh, backstage is this, uh, it's a Spotify, I think, released this open source UI for platform management. And uh, our UI is plugged into that. It's a plugin for that. And there are other plugins for that. We don't like typically in an organization, 
you deploy backstage and then you integrate your plugins like as a team, right? But we don't do that. What we do is we just bundle the whole backstage in an image and we just run our own instance of it. So what we can do is we can actually integrate some of those other plugins. In particular, there's a plugin for Kubernetes. So we can get live view of what's in the management cluster. So right now, when I go and deploy a package, say, stuff's happening in the management cluster. There's a package variant set being created. There's a package variants being created out of that. And I can't see any of it, except I go into kube control and I run a bunch of kube control commands. So if we added a plugin that allows us to look at the Kubernetes resources living in a Kubernetes cluster, um, then uh, we would make the UI substantially more functional. It still wouldn't be a Nafia specific. You basically have two sections then, a Kubernetes section and a sort of package management section. We really want to get to where we have a Nafia section, but it's not going to happen in R1, where we understand some of the Nafio resources like our clusters and things like that, and we can kind of give a more holistic view, and especially when we get to the topology pieces. But if we get these lower level pieces in place, it'll make it a lot more functional. So I don't know if anybody else is interested. This doesn't require like the JavaScript skills that implementing the panels and things do. It requires more like system integration. There's like, I mean, Backstage is kind of, it's not like super plug and play. It's like, oh, you want to integrate this plugin here, write this little bit of code. So there is some JavaScript, but it's like well-documented stuff you have to write. So if anybody's interested in doing that, that would be fantastic. So you'd need some Docker skills to build Docker and you'd need to follow the Backstage configuration instructions. Yeah, tell. So, um... Uh, related to this, we, we'd probably like to get the watcher agent incorporated as well, or rather its resources. So, you know, the topology controller is just now being added kind of at the, at the end of our process for R1. Uh, and uh, its CRDs have just been finalized, right? So Stephen has been working on that. So it would, we would like the UI to also include that. So that means showing the topology, but also showing the status updates from that. So I, I don't see this happening for R1. <laughs> that, that, <laughs> that's I, not going to happen. For, that, I mean, yeah. it's possible. Like Chandra and, and those folks, they, they put these viewers out in these editors. There's a, if you go on the SIG automation thing, there's, they put them out pretty fast. So now they, like, there was a ramp up to get the environment, their environments up and running and understand the, the existing code base, but now they've got it and they can whip these things out pretty fast, but that's a bigger ask, what you're saying. Like, it's yeah, I, I mean, technically we should all be at code freeze. <laughs> so yeah. I, I'm just very, very, very worried. Even if people can do it, I, I wonder if adding any new feature at this point is a good idea, right? Um, but I'll leave it to people's individual judgment if they think that they can handle it. And if they don't have anything more urgent to do. <laughs> yes. Yes. The reason like, like, like this one, um, the reason that it, it would, it would, I think it would, it would be a, a substantially more compelling thing and we're integrating an existing piece of, of, of code. So, um, it's not as, it's not, it's not as, um, it's not like writing our own UI, right? It's, it's, it's including a plugin. So I think there's some chance somebody can do it, but you're right. It's not necessarily the most urgent task. Uh, okay. We are just about out of time. So I want to make sure I'm not just blathering on. Like what, what do we, it sounds like those, those four, Big things Bala put in are probably where we need to start. Um, we got a few people volunteered to take on some things. Uh, what about other folks? Are there people who are itching to have some, some work to do? Um, I want to make sure everybody feels they have an opportunity to contribute if they have the capacity and availability to do so. So a couple of things, John. I also wanted to raise a couple of points. Uh, one is the, the we have we have two or three docs to produce as well in the next couple of weeks. Uh, user installation release docs. Yes. Maybe it will be. Uh, it may be as we do these things, we can produce those things as well. Some of the artifacts for those, and then we can put them together. 
the other question is uh, out of the TSC meeting uh, for the license stuff, right? For the Mozilla license specifically. Um, I'm not sure. I was kind of a little bit hazy. <laughs> me being out four days <laughs> made me made my memory vanish. So, did Kandan say that we need to contact LF Legal for that? I think he yes. He said can I think we should just send him a note with the details of hey, can we use this license? And here's our licensing scan information. Um, okay. What do we need to do to actually? I would even wouldn't say can we use this license. I would say what do we need to do to comply with this license, um, and is it acceptable to add it to our list of licenses in that case, right? Like, so let's just send it to Kandan and 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 Lucy, and let Lucy if you can send that note or yeah. or Dr. Rado and if you, if you need details from him and and um, send it to Kandan and Lucy and then let them follow up with the LF legal. Okay, I'll do that. Okay, thanks. Awesome, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, Tal, I think you have the, Tal has hands stale. Yeah, is your hand stale there, Tal, or you're? Um, it, it is stale, but I actually just thought of something. <laughs> okay. So uh, uh, I, I suggested in the past that we might we, we might be a good idea to have a documentation czar. Uh, I'm not volunteering myself, but somebody who just uh, goes over all the documentation related PRs, just make sure they're consistent, that they flow, that they link to each other correctly. Um, I think more than, yes, we need a, I think that's a great point. So one of the things, we haven't done is make a decision as far as I know on an actual documentation platform. My inclination would be to just write them in Markdown in GitHub right now, because then at least we have something. But um, yeah, we, we could definitely use somebody to take the lead on the documentation and make sure we have and are making progress and there's people assigned to uh, write the documents because there's a pretty substantial task ahead of us with that. Since Tal won't, won't volunteer himself, can I volunteer him? <laughs> <laughs> so I can, hey, hey Tal, I can be the czar. I can go through the, not. Uh, yeah, sure. I feel like you, you also have a lot on your plate. I was wondering if, uh, as John said, there are people who want to contribute and maybe didn't find exactly a place. So, I mean, I can volunteer for everything. I just don't, I, 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 want, I want this to be collaborative and make sure that everybody has a chance to, to shine and, and contribute to the project. So, um, yeah. That's, yeah, that's a great point. If somebody wants to take it, sure, otherwise I can do it. Yeah. Yeah, I think for people who are on the sidelines, not knowing much about the project, this might be a good chance. I think what Tal is proposing is a great one for getting people to- It's actually an advantage because somebody who maybe has not done, been involved with everything, documentation exactly is the place where you're a little bit removed from the day-to-day -day work. So you can, you know, we're all biased. If <laughs> Engineers yeah. are not famously good at writing their own documentation <laughs> because we're just too involved in, in it. So I think yeah. somebody who's a little bit outside will have the advantage of a, a clear mind and looking at potential issues. and. You know, when documentation is written, it sometimes you find like uh, design problems, right? Because Absolutely. you see that something that looks obvious is actually not obvious at all. So I, I think there's an advantage of somebody who might have been a little bit peripheral doing that. But um, yeah, but if nobody's stepping up right now, I mean, we can, um, Bala, if, if, if you feel comfortable doing that, I can definitely help. And yeah, uh, yeah we can do that. Sure, sure, Tom. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay. Okay, then uh, yeah, let's just sync up on Slack. Um, we'll have another call 9 a.m. tomorrow and uh, I'm gonna keep chugging forward on my pieces and feel, feel free to reach out to me um, and ask any questions. Um, but uh, I would like to see if we can make, get, get some of these, uh, if, if anybody can dig in and look at some of these PRs around the dependencies around getting that larger PR merged um, 
I think that will get us, you know, then we'll, we'll iterate from there. Um, so um, any other questions? Okay, awesome. Thank you, everybody. Um, talk to you on Slack and see you tomorrow morning. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you.